What's up, people of the space? Welcome back to our lounge. Most of us try to get through our day-to-day -day lives as conflict-free as possible, and that's great, but it can also mean getting walked over. It can feel really awkward to assert ourselves in certain situations, and being caught in tense situations can dredge up painful memories and insecurities. So, if you're feeling like a pushover or just feel like you need a little extra boost of self-esteem, get the boost you need from our stories today on our lounge. Does an eye for an eye make the world go blind? Let's find out on our first story. Am I the a-hole for making my sister-in-law pay above average rent for one bedroom? I am 100% being petty here, but curious if I am actually wrong. Most of my husband's family think I am being childish and need to let the past go. As my sister-in-law can't afford this, but her behavior toward us in the past makes me feel this is warranted. Two years ago, my house burnt to the ground after being struck by lightning. Thankfully, it was during the day so our three kids were at school and my husband and I were at work. We lost everything, but we were safe. It took almost 11 months for the insurance to pay out. The insurance covered one month worth of hotel stays, but after that, we were made to fend for ourselves and the only option we had was to move in with my sister-in-law. She tells us we can have her spare room and her office space. Since she used neither of the rooms and her stipulation was we needed to purchase all of our own food and pay her $100 a week. By week three, all of that changed. She then decides we need to pay her $250 a week and we can only use one room. So all five of us were crammed into the smallest room she had, which was the size of a glorified closet space and didn't even fit a twin bed and a small dresser. So we lived out of trash bags and slept on the floor for close to $1,000 a month, some months, and still had to purchase all of our own food despite her claiming my children on her food stamps. She also had no bills outside of her land tax, $450 a year, electric and heating oil, which she hardly ever filled. So we were essentially paying her so she could do leisure activities. It was the worst eight months of my life. Three months ago, my grandmother decided that she wanted to go to assisted living after a fall and transferred the deed of her house to me and basically said it was mine now. It is a five bedroom farmhouse. My boys insist on sharing a room, so we have two extra bedrooms. Well. My sister-in-law lost her house last month due to not paying her land tax for several years and asked if her and her stepdaughter could stay with us until they get enough money to move down south. I said, sure, one bedroom, $800 a month, and you have to buy and cook all your food separately because my daughter is vegan. She looked at me like I had 10 heads and said that she and her stepdaughter should not be made to share a room when there are two extra rooms and stated she cannot afford a rent of $800 while purchasing all of her own food on top of it. I said, neither could we. But we managed to cram five people into a glorified closet space while you were getting paid a thousand dollars in food stamps take it or leave it she decided to leave again i am being told i am childish am i the a-hole our first judgment comes from time passing not the a-hole it's 250 dollars a month for the room and 750 dollars a month for you having to see her stupid face every day you're giving her an 80 percent discount on the rent because she's family alienator chimes in next wow I was really going the other way when I read the title, but yeah, you are not the a-hole. You simply treated your sister-in-law how she treated you. Not worse, and not better. If she thinks it's unfair, then it shows she knew what she did was wrong first. Screw anybody who says you should accommodate. Best thing ever that she left. Enjoy your farmhouse. Fast Yellow Tuesday weighs in next. OP would still be treating her better. Sister-in-law's problem is of her own making. Took years to create and she could have avoided the whole thing if she used some of the rent OP gave her for taxes. OP lost everything from a fire that she had no part in making and couldn't have predicted. She had fire insurance. What else could she have done? Sister-in-law was an a-hole when OP's family had an emergency. Already pretty enough has our next thought. If she wouldn't pay land tax to keep her house, no way she'd actually pay rent to OP. You aren't the a-hole at all, OP. You're showing her the same courtesy that she showed you. You offered your home and told her the ground rules, and she was the one that passed it up. That's on her. It's her job to take care of her child, and if she thinks she can do that somewhere else, so be it. That's not on you. And to be honest, you dodged a bullet. If she lost her house due to the fact that she couldn't pay land tax, then she, more than likely, would have a hard time paying you if she had stayed. So rather than deal with that and bring that into the family dynamic, she decided not to, which was actually a good and responsible decision on her part. The last thing you need is family drama. And it's not about whether there's a past or not. At the end of the day, you did what you had to. And so did she. An eye for an eye. It's fair and square. Good on you for sticking to your guns. That wasn't at all a childish thing to do. You made all the right moves, OP. What are your thoughts? Would you have made the same arrangement for your sister-in-law? Let us know in the comments below. Our next story talks about kicking her controlling fiancé to the curb 
over the perfect cup of coffee. Am I the a-hole for not making coffee how my fiance wants me to? Weird title, I, 23 female, no. But this has been a point of contention for a while. My fiance, 25 male, is a foodie and is extremely particular about a few things, one of them being coffee. We use a manual grinder, get distilled water. The water in our area is really hard and according to him, affects the taste, but I don't notice anything. And we have an aero press and a metal coffee filter to make the coffee. I'm very much not a foodie, unless being a Sour Patch Kids connoisseur is a thing. My fiance weighs his coffee beans to make sure that he's using the exact right amount, changes the setting on the coffee grinder depending on whether he's using the AeroPress or the metal coffee filter, measures the water, and if he's using the AeroPress, lets the coffee grounds and water brew for a certain amount of time before actually making the coffee. On the other hand, I use a scoop to measure my coffee beans, use whatever setting the grinder is on, will usually just use tap water, eyeball the water instead of measuring it, and don't let it sit to brew. And you know what? It's fine. It tastes fine. It makes me happy. The end. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Problem is that this really bothers my fiance. We've had multiple arguments about me making my coffee wrong, and it's very normal for him to badger me, weigh my coffee beans, or switch the coffee grinder to the optimal setting while I'm making my coffee. If I'm making coffee for him, sure, I'll measure the beans and all of that jazz because I know that he can taste the difference. But I don't think that I should have to jump through all those hoops for something that doesn't affect him. On the other hand, he seems to be really bothered by this. Today, as I was trying to scoop coffee beans into the grinder, he reached around me to put the scale he uses in front of me and asked me to please weigh my coffee beans. I was really frustrated because we've had this conversation so many times, so I snapped the word no at him and he walked away and muttered, you too, saying that even though I hadn't said it, I'd definitely been thinking, F you. For the record, I wasn't thinking that. So, am I the a-hole for not making coffee how my fiancé thinks I should, and for sometimes snapping at him when he gets pushy about it? Edit. I don't know if this is important, but I drink decaf and he drinks regular, so I'm never making coffee for both of us. I'm either making coffee for him, or I'm making coffee for myself. Edit 2. I sat him down and told him that I needed him to never comment on how I make my coffee and how I was making it. He repeated it back to me in his own words to check that he understood me. A counselor once told me that this is helpful to do in an argument, and then he agreed. Edit 3. Okay, people keep bringing this up. Google and AeroPress because I don't feel like explaining it. Basically, you push on a phallic symbol until you have coffee. Putting hard water through it does not damage it. As much as my fiancé drives me crazy, I would never do something to damage his equipment because it's important to him. Amelia the Mouse chimes in with an opinion. Not the a-hole. Why should he care how you make your coffee? He needs to distance himself from things that don't affect him. Honestly, it would be like you telling him to stop weighing his coffee or using distilled water because, since you can't tell the difference, it bothers you that he can. Would he think that was reasonable? Edit. If his counterargument is, but my way is right, he's wrong. His way is how he likes it. There's no objectively right way to do. Alton Brown would tell you using distilled water is not madness. Spring water would be better. Update. So it's been about a year since I made this post. Whenever I read posts like mine on here, I'm always wondering, did OP leave that a-hole? So for those of you who care, I left that a-hole. A lot of you are on the nose that this wasn't the only way that he was controlling. My ex believes that he's the smartest person in the room. So if you're doing something differently than how he would, then you're doing it wrong and must be corrected. I'm not saying that everyone's responses to my post gave me a revelation and I immediately knew what I had to do, but it was a nail in the coffin. I'm living within an hour of my parents now, when before, I was on the opposite side of the country. I have a job as a caregiver, and am planning to go to grad school to be a social worker. I have a boyfriend who doesn't try to control every aspect of my life. When I go grocery shopping, I'm not stressing about accidentally buying the wrong brand of pasta, which was the right brand of pasta when we lived in a different state. I still don't get that. Or juice that's from concentrate. And I've switched to pre-ground coffee because, F you, I want to. None of this would have happened if I'd stayed with him. So yeah. Thank you to everyone who played a tiny role in helping me see what an unhealthy relationship I was in. Co-Fragment chimes in after this. My ex believes that he's the smartest person in the room. Now he's sat alone in that room. It'll always be true. Meg MCA says, Pre-ground coffee? Next, it'll be tea in bags. Mr. Bean adds, Congrats, how did X take the breakup? The OP responds, He'd seen it coming and had been casually telling me that I wasn't mentally stable enough to make any major life decisions. He told me that I had depression, anxiety, and autism, all of which a licensed therapist has told me I don't have. 
And when I broke up with him, he doubled down on it and said that I was doing this because I needed therapy. He maintained that stance until a breakfast we had together where he spent the entire time telling me everything that I did wrong in the relationship and then had a revelation that I was right and that we wanted different things. He'll never understand that he was abusive, but he at least knows that I'm not coming back to him. Bending College Grad has one more comment. A friend of mine once asked their partner during the breakup, what do you do to make my life better? They couldn't think of a thing. It's something I keep in mind now. Honestly, OP, it was never just about the coffee. You nailed it on the head. He was definitely trying to control you. And to start with something so little and trivial as to coffee is a red flag. Remember that your partner should have no jurisdiction over you. You don't have to please him or her, worry about his or her comfort, or try to justify anything you're doing. If you're struggling, it's okay to talk to a therapist who can help you work toward being secure in your own independence, or friends who can help you get out of an unhealthy relationship. You did the right thing by leaving. It's easy to overlook those things at the beginning of a relationship because we are so in love with that person. But we must remember that in no circumstance do we deserve to be treated less than or as if we don't have control over ourselves or our lives. Love should never cost you your peace, OP. It should never cost you your joy. It should never cost you your happiness. If there's more negative in the situation than positive, something has to change. Our last OP tries to choke down a girl's day out with her stepmom. Am I the a-hole for getting upset and telling my dad his girlfriend didn't buy me a Starbucks drink? I, 17 female, have been living with my dad, 45 male, his girlfriend of two years, 33 female, and her daughter, 13 female, for a couple of months now while my mom, 40 female, is visiting my sick grandfather in Sweden. I've only ever stayed at my dad's on weekends, so it's been hard to getting used to living with his girlfriend and her kid full time. The kid is super whiny and pretty spoiled because girlfriend dotes on her, so I usually just stay in my room. Today, girlfriend was taking her daughter on a special outing because she passed a math test, and my dad suggested I go with him for a girl's day out. I wanted to say no, but I knew that he wanted me to get to know his girlfriend and girlfriend's daughter better, so I agreed. He gave girlfriend $300 to spend during the outing. We spent the day going in and out of stores girlfriend's daughter liked in the mall complex. Girlfriend ended up buying her a crap ton of clothes, makeup, and other stuff I don't remember. On our way back home, Girlfriend stopped at the Starbucks because daughter wanted a drink and some cake pops. She ordered a drink for her and her daughter and two cake pops. I asked her if I could get something and she said she ran out of money and she'd get me something next time. When they got their order, I asked if I could have one of the cake pops and girlfriend said that it was her daughter's treat for hard work and it would be wrong for me to take one since I didn't do anything that deserved being rewarded. I'm not going to lie, I was pretty upset. When we got back home, my dad saw their drinks and asked where mine was. I told him that I wasn't allowed to get one because I don't deserve it. His girlfriend got upset and said I was twisting her words and the daughter just said I was being greedy and was jealous of her. I know I'm not entitled to a drink or a cake pop, but I also don't think it's wrong to be a little annoyed. Am I the a-hole? Her first reaction comes from, fool me once, shame on you. Oh, sweetie, not the a-hole. And I want you to know that you absolutely were entitled to a drink and a cake pop or another treat of your choosing. Your dad gave her $300 that was meant to be spent on all three of you for the day out. Sure, her daughter may have earned something special for her hard work at school, but from the sound of it, he intended for you all to get treated a bit, and it's disgusting that she would go to a coffee shop and get things for herself and her daughter and not for you. As someone older than your dad, even, I can tell you that his girlfriend's behavior was super not okay and not the way she should have be treating her partner's kid. None of my friends would ever treat their stepkids or partner's kids that way in a million years. I'm so sorry that happened to you, and I'm really glad you told your dad. She deserved to get yelled at. The OP responds, Thank you. You've really made me feel better. Yeehaw Meemaw chimes in. You are definitely not the a-hole. Girlfriend was, though. But, spill the tea. What was your dad's reaction to girlfriend's lame excuses? The OP responds, This happened 30 minutes ago, and before he said anything, I just went up to my room. I'm hearing yelling from downstairs, though. I love my dad a lot, and he has always looked out for me so I don't think he wouldn't believe me. Add empty 4390 chimes in, not the a-hole. We would love updates when you have them. The OP responds, update. I just finished talking to my dad. I explained everything that happened at the mall, and he apologized and said that he'll be returning everything that was bought and will be taking a day off work tomorrow so we could do something together. He also put up girlfriend and daughter in a hotel so I can have space from them and said they'll be staying there until my mom gets back. Once I'm ready to see them, he said they will apologize to me and once my mom comes back, he's going to have a talk with girlfriend. Oh, OP, you did not deserve that treatment and you most definitely are not the a-hole. 
That was meant to be a girl's day out, and you weren't at all treated like a part of the family. I'm so glad your dad allowed you to have some space from them and is planning on doing something with you. That's how parents are supposed to treat their children. I would be asking to have a sit down as a family so that everyone can get on the same page. Your stepmom needs to understand that what she did was wrong. In some cases, she might not even realize what she's doing is wrong. It might be important to have this conversation with her to lay out everything on the table. I'm so sorry you had to experience that. This is in no way, shape, or form a reflection of who you are as a person. Your dad will be there for you no matter what. Continue to be honest and forthright with him. The Brady Bunch may have been a fun show, but it wasn't exactly realistic in showing how tough it can be to blend two families together. You can't just mash people together into the same house, call it a family, and hope it all works out. Karen, it takes a great deal of work and messiness and compassion and time. Functional families take work. Have you ever had to deal with a toxic step-parent? Let us know the details in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on Our Lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video. As always, let us know if you have feedback on today's content in the comments below. We can't wait to see you next time. We can't wait 